great privilege to be here and um, to have you here with us. Yes, um, before we start, I would really love to thank Funke Ajay. Thank you so much for this rare privilege. Um, I never intend to take it for granted. Thanks so much. I celebrate you. Um, very quickly, we will move over to our presentation today. Um, we will be talking very quickly about the mindset, identity, and work. Okay, we'll go straight to the mindset. Um, from this slide, we'll see that the mindset encapsulates quite a number of things. Your performance, your attitude, behavior, actions, and results. Yes, the mindset, your mindset and the way you make use of it affects all this which have been outlined. Your performance, either at work, in a function, at home, anywhere you may find yourself. It also has a um, great effect on your attitude, which in turn affects your behavior and how you treat people. On the other hand, it also boils down to your actions, how well you drive yourself, and which in turn leads to the results you have either at work or at home. Now we'll go through the keywords before us. We have the mindset, we have um, identity, we also have work. Now, these definitions um, were gotten from the Merriam-Webster dictionary. Yeah, for mindset, it is a mental attitude or inclination, a fixed state of mind, a mental attitude or inclination, a fixed state of mind. For identity, it has been defined as a distinguishing character or personality of an individual. Now, for mindset, it has to do with um, how you, well your brain works and controls your thinking, your thought process, and how well you do things. For identity is um, the way you see yourself and the way others see you. Now, for example, at work, I may be seen as a professional, as a legal practitioner, as um, a negotiator. Now, at home, I would most likely be seen as a brother, as a son. Now, at a social function, I would be seen as lively, and the likes do we get so identity is how not only how you view yourself but how um, others view you yes whatever someone says about you is your identity to that person now to me funke i would say funke um as a very astute hr professional and um one who loves her work at home she will be seen as a loving daughter she will be seen as um, a home-loving person. Now, in church or in a function, she will be seen as a jovial person, someone fun to be with and the likes. That's her identity as it relates to different people. Now, for work, work is a specific task, duty, function, or assignment, often being a part or a face of some larger activity. Now, it's also defined as an activity that a person engages in regularly to earn a living. Now, work, um, anything that is done to earn a living, no matter how little, it's work. Now, work may not just be when you... Okay, I know some people term work as exercise. Well, that's a task. That's a function, right, in a whole. So that's what we would see work to be. Now in this parlance, as it relates to this conference, um, employability nuggets would most likely, would more preferably refer to it as um, a task duty function as it relates to we earning a living. Yes. Now to our next slide, I would really love us to read this and take it to heart. Mindset is everything. Your mindset is the basis, the foundation of whatever happens around you. Now, um, aside being a legal advisor and a mindset um, enthusiast, I strongly believe that um, for there to be any change whatsoever, it boils down to the mindset. For there to be any change in whatever sphere, politically, um, physically, spiritually, professionally, in whatever phase, mindset is everything. Without the mindset being in check, well, um, we really don't have much to say about 
any other thing. This is because the mindset affects your thought process. Your mindset leads to whatever decision process you make. It either makes or melts you. That's why um, it's a very strong topic we showed from time to time, hold up to. Now we'll go through the types of mindsets. Yes, um, there are several types of mindsets. Um, different scholars have posited um, based on their perspectives. Nonetheless, we should have it in mind that um, all other types of mindsets are imbibed in these two major ones. Now that's been said, um, the major types of mindsets we have are the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. Yes, the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. Well, um, from the next slide, we'll see that these types of mindsets are way different. Yes, for the growth mindset and the fixed mindset, they, um, are, they lead to different directions. You can't really save someone who has both a mix of the fixed and growth mindset. You have to pick one lane. Well, if I were you, I would really go with the growth mindset. Yes, the growth mindset. On our next slide, um, we'll see the features of the fixed and the growth mindset. For the fixed mindset, um, one with the fixed mindset believes that intelligence is static. That's when you hear such a person saying, um, my potential is predetermined. I really can't learn more to be more. Yes. So for someone with the fixed mindset, intelligence is seen as static. For someone with the growth mindset, on the other hand, intelligence can be developed. Intelligence is developed. Now, for the fixed mindset, it leads to a desire to look smart. Now, I really love us to understand the fact that looking smart doesn't mean one is smart, right? Um, looking smart does not mean one is smart. Um, on the other hand, the growth mindset leads to the desire to learn. Yes, the desire to learn, no matter how little, with every slight opportunity, there's always a desire to learn and be good at what one is doing. Now, for the fixed mindset, um, one with the fixed mindset avoids challenges. That's when you would hear someone say, I really don't like to be challenged. I'm fine with the way I am. Um, for one with the growth mindset, such a person embraces challenges. Such a person sees... Um, challenges as more or less a stepping stone to better things, to greater results and the likes. Now for the fixed mindset, it gives, such a person gives up easily. Such a person gives up easily when such a person comes across a little challenge, um, comes across a stumbling block, either in career, um, business-wise, um, in whatever sphere, such a person gives up easily. Um, in investment, such a person with a little each can back up so easily. Now, for the growth mindset, such a person um, persists in the face of setback. Now, for the fixed mindset, um, one with the fixed mindset sees efforts as fruitless. One with the growth mindset, on the other hand, sees efforts as a path to mastery. Now, looking through this, we would understand uh, we should really take to heart that um, when one puts effort into something, be it at work, at home, in whatever endeavors, well, um, if the efforts do not really yield the desired results, doesn't mean it wouldn't pull through. Now, for one with a fixed mindset in that scenario, um, such a person easily backs out, as we've earlier said, and sees such little strikes as fruitless. Now, if someone with a fixed mindset ignores useful negative feedback, now such a person doesn't understand the fact that not all negative feedbacks are negative. Negative feedbacks may just be at that point in time. It does not mean it affects the whole process. Such a person sees more or less the specific as the general. I hope we get that. Now, for one with a growth mindset, such a person learns from criticism. Such a person learns from criticism and looks forward to more negative feedbacks. Now, such a person with um, a growth mindset should very well be careful because um, there really needs to be a balance 
uh, when um, seeking feedback. By this, I mean it is very possible one with a growth mindset is always looking for negative feedbacks. And when there's a positive feedback, such a person might not believe. Now, for example, if I'm at work and I had, I did an agreement for a client, which was with powerful clauses, um, clauses that would very well defend or protect my client's interests. Now, if my boss comes to work and praises me on that agreement, if I were one with too much of a growth mindset, um, it is possible I don't believe my boss. That's because one with a growth mindset really needs to be careful on finding a balance between holding negative feedbacks and believing the true positive feedbacks given. Such a person should appreciate the positive feedbacks given as well as understand the place of negative feedbacks. Um, one with a fixed mindset feels threatened by the success of others. Now, if I have a group of friends who are doing well and I have a fixed mindset, I well would, to some extent, um, to some extent, celebrate with them. Nonetheless, it doesn't mean it goes down well with me because I see that as a challenge to make me do better. Now, I believe we understand from what was said earlier that one with a fixed mindset avoids challenges. Now, with that in mind, such a person with a fixed mindset does not want positive challenges, does not want to be pushed to be better. So such a person feels threatened by the success of others. And this really has to do with the law of association, right? Because um, most times you see that people with fixed mindsets move together, right? And those with growth mindsets thrive and push each other to achieve more. At what they do now one with a growth mindset finds lessons and inspiration in the success of others this is very important such a person with a growth mindset finds lessons and inspiration in the success of others now to cap it up well not the least such one with a fixed mindset has a deterministic view at hand while one with a growth mindset has a great sense of free will learns on the job, strives to be better, is open-minded. Yes, while one with a fixed mindset is um, boxed up most of the time. Yes, and, well, let me just add this. One with a fixed mindset assumes too much, assumes that every little opportunity, while one with a growth mindset sees reasons. And, well, assumption for the science-inclined ones Assumption is part of science, right? But one with a growth mindset balances assumption with analysis. Yes. Going forward, um, let's go through identity. Like I said earlier, identity has to do with um, how you are seen, how you are perceived, how you are addressed, how people see you. Now, there are different chains to identity when it comes to friends, clubs, social groups. Um, social identity now for interest attractions meaningful experiences for creating why do you create or do you really create do you create for yourself or for other people beliefs and values as relates to identity personal family social for appearance what you see what others see this is the part of identity most people are well inclined with that's identity as it relates to appearance. I know we all must have heard the um, expression, you are addressed the way you dress, right? Yeah. Um, going forward, I would, um, well, I miss this. Now, for the features we went through, the features on um, the fixed and growth mindset, that's by the great um, professor, the great... Carol S. Dweck. She is a profound professor and has spent decades studying mindsets and how it affects people in relation to work. Yes, when we talk of mindsets, it very well means and boils down to your mental health. 
yes it's aside the way you think whatever you think how you treat how um, your mindset is really affects your mental health which in turn affects every other part of our bodies and how well we relate yes for mental health it has to do with um how best our mind works how best our mind works and the way it affects our productivity and effectiveness as well as efficiency now the link how or better put what's the link between um your mindset your identity and work how do these expressions relate to work how best do they affect your work well i would really love to put it to you that your mindset the way you think the way you see yourself right um affects your productivity level it affects the way you um carry out your task at work it affects the way you um respond yes it affects the way you respond well um for those of us that in one way or the other attended interviews um when you hear an interviewer ask you um questions like are managers born or they are made i um want to believe they really want to understand if you are one with a fixed mindset or with a growth mindset yes so the link between the mindset the identity and work is you balancing and um moving from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset to enhance productivity to enhance effectiveness and efficiency at work doing your work part-time with excellence in mind yes um for one with a growth with a fixed mindset um there are people who have not very well aligned themselves with the new face of work as a, as affected by the pandemic now for one with a growth mindset such a person is thinking outside the box is future inclined and working with the new face of work as it were well uh, going forward we'll go through how we can decolonize our mind decolonizing your mind um as you can see with this graphical illustration one way or the other in we've all been caged our mind have um, all been caged at one point or the other now it takes intentional effort to decolonize our mind to set our mind free from whatever um whatever holds it down yes um there was a study at the point that was termed the two percent mindset so that study reads that the two percent of the population go for their dreams with confidence and um excitement yes that two percent of the population go for their dreams with confidence and excitement and they choose happiness and fulfillment while 98 percent enjoy being neutral and simply let life push them into submission because of the lack of willpower now this is the 98 percent are those that are well dealt with and colonized by the fixed mindset now the two percent it really takes intentional effort to move from the fixed mindset to the um growth mindset and that's more or less what we'll be looking through in the next in few minutes um i'm just trying to beat up time so we would uh, have since it's more or less um, an opening i strongly believe i really celebrate the other speakers on board and the panelists i can trust their work and i'm looking forward to their sessions very powerful sessions from um miss orolua mrs orolua from funke ajayi dipo latunji from um mr agbabi akam michaels wow i really look forward to those sessions from them i know they will do well and do justice to it now going to the next session to grow to have a growth mindset 
you need to decolonize your mind and stretch it beyond borders. Yes, you need to. Um, wow, that was a typographical error. Borders there is supposed to be B O R D E R S. Um, we need to decolonize our minds and stretch it beyond borders. Pardon me, that should be B O R D E R S. Now, for the first, we need to validate our, our goals and vision. Yes, to have a growth mindset, to have a transition from a growth mindset to to, from a fixed mindset, pardon me, to a growth mindset, you need to validate your goals and vision. It's very possible the goals you set, if at all any have been set, um, either career-wise, financial goals, um, social social goals, whatever goals that might have been set, it's very possible those goals are not futuristic. Those goals are always set from a fixed mindset. So you really need to validate your goals and vision. Look through them. Um, can your goals really last in the next five years? Yes, you really need to validate your goals and vision. Um, develop the power of be believing you can improve. Now, this is one issue with um, those with the fixed mindset they are always relaxed on their own. And um, I know we we very well understand the expression comfort zone. Um, those with the fixed mindset are very much comfortable in their comfort zone, which is a very dangerous thing. Um, so to move from the fixed mindset to the growth mindset, you need to develop the power of believing you can improve. Most especially at work, this has really affected a lot of um young professionals and they very well see um, it can be quite painful. I've seen um, young scholars with powerful results ending up with um, looking for jobs that are quite demeaning. Um, that's because they have been beaten down with the fact that they cannot improve, they cannot do better and they cannot be better at what they really want to do. Um, next, we um, to decolonize your mind and stretch it beyond borders, you really need to focus on your long-term vision. What have really been set down as your long-term vision, you need to go back to the drawing board and focus on your long-term vision. Now for the next, I love this. Do the dirty work yourself. It's very possible at work or in time past, um, when it comes to the difficult tasks at work, we tend to push that to our colleagues and give excuses. Well, those are traits of um, one with the fixed mindset. Changing or transiting to the growth mindset, you really need to do the dirty work yourself. Yes, those works you think cannot be done only can be done only by your uplines, by your superiors. Take the challenge, push at it, do something about it. Well, if you make a mistake your upline to death to correct you. The world is a global village. Yes, I usually tell my friends and associates that um, YouTube is the eighth wonder of the world. You can learn anything on YouTube. Do the dirty work yourself. You can improve, you can be better whatever you do by doing it yourself. You really can't be better by pu keep um, pushing it. Yes, um, to the next, understand the power of not yet. Yes, understand the power of not yet. By this, I very well mean that um, when your boss tells you something or gives you a challenging task, there's really a balance to saying, no, I can't do this in your mind. And it's another thing to say, well, not yet. Let me get back to you on that. Yes, understand the power of not yet. It gives you a driving force. Yes. Now to the next on building a growth mindset at work, um, constantly challenge yourself, constantly challenge yourself. Um, I very well understand the need for areas of specialization. Nonetheless, the, there should be rooms for um, improvement. There should be rooms for learning and development. Challenge yourself at the higher task. Challenge yourself at those that seem difficult, right? Um, I usually um, have long time head of 
the um, expression impossible. And some people say impossible means I am possible. <laughs> well, that's quite challenging. Just challenge yourself at what you do. Now, regularly revisit and reassess your long-term goals. Regularly revisit and reassess your long-term goals. Now, to this, I would really say that as you set your long-term goals, you need to break them down to bits. Break them down to bits in such a way that you can crush them part time. I remember posting something mid last year where I said, um, that was in July last year, when I posted something online and um, said, it really feels good to smash your goals, right? Now, you really need to revisit and reassess your long term goals. Now, to the next, engage in policies that will help you improve your mindset. Yes, engage in policies, in discussions, in interactions that will help influence your mindset, that will help improve your mindset. The law of association comes into play here, right? Um, you really need to be open to discussions, be open to policies, to conferences. I don't joke with conferences. I am a conference junkie. As long as it helps to improve, to influence my mindset. Yes, to this you have a smooth journey to having a growth mindset. Now to the next, take advantage of growth and development opportunities. There are very, there are quite a number of um, companies or establishments that encourage um, continuous development. Now it's is a dangerous thing to waive those continuous developments. Take advantage, pull the bull by the horn, and move forward to growth and development opportunities now um, for the next seek and embrace training opportunities they can never they are not in any way exhaustible they are always training opportunities opportunities to be good at what you do opportunities to be better and to um, find better ways of doing your task and pulling through now spend time out with friends and colleagues outside working hours. This is very important. It's really not all about work, work, work. You most times uh, ideas flow with being free, with being relaxed, right? Ideas flow with being free, with being relaxed. Now for the last one, um, go for vacation from time to time. Go for vacation from time to time. Yes. Um, I know some of you are saying, which money would I use for that? Well, vacation, for vacation, you don't really need to travel out. Go for vacation from time to time. Find ways to um, cool yourself, to ease the stress off your neck. Yes, um, find ways to do that. That's really important because vacations, time out from work, help you expand your mind. Traveling helps you expand your mind um your mindset is broadened when you travel yes well one would say i to travel i need to travel out well you don't really have to that's very much needed well nonetheless you don't have to travel out to expand your mind like i said earlier um the world is a global village and um a lot of wonders are happening online which you can get inclined to attend conferences online chill out online and um, <clears throat> study online well read as it relates to your work most of these things can be done online without you well you would really need to spend some bits nonetheless it may not be as exhaustive as you would expect yes um just a recap one with a growth with a fixed mindset is one who is relaxed on his oars one who would always say um i stick to what i know i stick to what i know my potential is predetermined i don't like to be challenged i am fine where i am um those are very dangerous words to say now for one with a growth mindset is such a person that would say i like to try out new things i really like to see how this will go Yes, they are the ones that take on opportunities. Now, um, one with a fixed mindset is one who um, 
does not really see challenge as a drive to better things, right? Um, and that really affects our work pattern. That affects our work pattern. I know in, uh, well, there will most likely be people outside Nigeria listening. Nonetheless, um, in a country like Nigeria, there's a particular line of work that most people will think those with fixed mindsets are attributed to. Well, <laughs> that's story for another day. Yes, next, still on the growth mindset. Think positive. Think positive. Now to think positive, you need to read. You need to uh, broaden your knowledge as it relates to your line of work. Think positive. From the next slide, we will see that the same old thinking leads to the same old results. The same old thinking leads to the same old results. You need to think positive. Think smart to be good at what you do. Um, there are negative thoughts. How do you think positive? From time to time, you need to read what influences you positively. You need to um, take time out meditating, thinking through um, what, how your day has been, how your week has been, how best to improve on what per time. Thinking positive cannot be done without to have a growth mindset. Yes, thinking positive cannot be done without. Okay, now to this, change your mindset. As we can see on this slide, we see... Um, the do's and the don'ts. The do's and the don'ts. Now, we'll read through. Don't think of stress as a threat. See stress as a challenge. Don't think of stress as a demoralizer. See it and think of it as a motivator. Don't think of stress as a pressure, but as an opportunity. Um, now, when most people ask me, um, how was the journey? How was this? How was that? Well, I really love to say it was adventurous. Yes, because there's always something to learn per time, irrespective of whatever one goes through. Yes, there's always something to learn per time. And um, owning up to your decisions helps you keep up with the growth mindset. Owning up to your decision, no blame games. Um, now, don't think of stress as overwhelming. Think of it as manageable. Don't think of stress as overwhelming. Think of it as manageable. Now, uh, don't think of stress as debilitating. Think of it as energizing. Yes. Now, also don't focus on problems. Focus on possibilities. In every problem, there are possibilities. In every problem, the reason why there are problems is really because there are solutions. And if at all there are no solutions at hand, there will definitely be positions. Um, provisions, there will be possibilities, and those problems are just rooms for us to think wider, right? So whatever work we have before us, is there are rooms to think wider to be better. Yes, don't um, run from stress, but embrace stress. When you embrace stress, you have a better thought process on how to process um, how best to uh carry out your tasks over time now this is the personal growth model as facilitated by the mind um, elevator now we have the belief the mindset identity motivation to the plan the goal setting organization work strategy for the action execution habits productivity outcome that's for the results outcome reward feedback for review, we have evaluation, assessment, redesign strategies. Um, the personal growth model, um, it actually leads to a lot, a lot, lots and lots of results. Lots and lots of results and feedback. You may need to put this down. The personal growth model works. It works. Belief, plan, action, result, review. And it all moves in a cycle. Belief, plan, action, result, review. I'm a living testimony of this. The personal growth model works, yes. Well, I would really love to say thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much once again, Funke Ajayi, for this great opportunity, for this great privilege um, to share with us. I'm really looking forward to the 
um, subsequent sessions and I will sure log in. Thank you very much once again. I celebrate you all.